Okay, today we're talking about advanced React interview questions and more specifically component design. So I've got three patterns that I would ask anybody if I really wanted to get to the bottom of whether or not they really knew their stuff as it pertains to advanced React. Before we get into things, I just wanna set the context a little bit. So interview processes can look different at different companies. I've talked about this in the past. And usually you start out with a phone screen or you might start out with a technical screen, but usually there's some kind of conversational or live component to interviews. And that may or may not involve live coding. And in my mind, this is not gonna be a live coding kind of thing. This is going to be more of a conversational kind of thing, which is the type of interview that I've always done. I've always been a little bit more light on the live coding piece. I feel like you can get to the bottom of somebody's understanding just as well by discussing things. And so these are those kinds of questions. So with that said, if I were really trying to probe the depths of someone's understanding of React, the first component design question I would ask is what is a higher order component? So a higher order component, also called a hawk, is basically a way of reusing code. And a spoiler is that all of the patterns I'm going to discuss make your code more clean, more efficient, more modular, and more reusable. So higher order components are just one way of doing that and of sharing code. So the idea behind a higher order component is it takes another component as an input and returns it as kind of a wrapped version of itself. And so essentially what you're doing is in the parent component, the higher order component, you're able to share properties and methods to whatever component is passed in. So let's say you have, I don't know, an API call or something, and you have to make that call a bunch of places. Instead of writing it in every single place, what you could do is write it as part of a higher order component, pass whatever component in that you want to use, and then you get it back and you're able to use that method there on the child component. That's kind of a silly example, but you see this in the real world all over the place if you do React in any substantial way. So probably the classic example is with React Router. The function with router is a higher order component. You're passing your component in, and then when it comes back, you get history and match and location. And those are all things that come from the higher order component. Another thing you'll notice about higher order components is they typically start with the keyword with. Now this isn't required, but it is kind of an accepted standard. So for example, with router, like I mentioned, or whatever else it happens to be, you would start it with the keyword with, and that would be something good to mention in an interview. Okay, so that's higher order components. The next pattern that I would ask about in an advanced React interview is render props. Okay, so the kind of standard definition of what is a render prop is that a render prop is a function that a component receives as a prop that it uses to know what to render. So often the prop is just called render and then it's used in the component that receives it in the render function. So it would be, for example, this.props.render inside of the render function. And this function prop makes it possible to share behavior between the component that is receiving that prop and any other component that needs to either share behavior or state. So it's a little bit more challenging verbally. I think it's easier to see written in code, but there's actually some great examples in the React documentation if you want to study up on this. I'll pop an example up here. It basically is an example where a component called mouse and a component called cat are trying to share the same state about where the mouse is on the screen. And so you can see it's a fairly elegant way of passing this information between two components that happen to be in the same component tree. I feel like I should say here, these are good things not just to know about, but to actually use in your real life code. I find that one of the best ways to learn is by doing, and the more that you use these patterns, you'll not only get good at using them, but you'll get better at explaining them too. And so I would just encourage you not only to learn things for the interview, but actually for real life. With that said, if someone could give me a really solid definition and example for render props, I would probably be impressed and more confident that they knew what they were doing. Okay, so that's render props. The third pattern I would ask about is how to write a custom hook. Now, as I mentioned, the point of all these patterns is to share code and reuse it and make things more clean and modular, and custom hooks are no different. So you use a custom hook whenever you want to share logic between two functional components in React. So you take that functionality or logic and you can just extract it into your own custom hook if you want to use it between two functional components. The interesting thing here is that components are functions, hooks are also functions, and so this is just yet another function that you're writing in order to make things a little bit more reusable. So since this custom hook is just a function, you can go write that wherever you please and actually return whatever you want as well. One of the only conventions is to use the keyword use in front of whatever the hook is called.
called. So it would be use your custom hook name, but that's pretty much it. If your custom hook has a setter and not just a getter, then something I like to do is kind of to follow the hooks convention of returning the value and the function to update the value in an array. And that way it kind of keeps everybody using the same patterns that React has established. And I think that's pretty cool. But you also can just return one value if it's simply a getter. I think it's important to mention here and also could be kind of impressive to mention in an interview that two components using the same hook don't share state. Hooks are really just a way to reuse stateful logic according to the React documentation. And so keeping that in mind could really influence how you answer this question and also how you write your components. Okay, so those are three advanced React interview questions on component design. I will put links below to React documentation and other resources that I find helpful in learning these concepts. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, then you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and career development. So please feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one.